All right, welcome back. Let's get ready for the next talk. Becoming a Nix Packages contributor. Give it up for Yatsik and Tom. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so, actually, I'm just going to start off and say, hey, do a little intro. Um, this is Yasek. I'm Tom. I'll let him run through that. Um, but uh, I think the idea here was that uh, I get asked a lot, how do we contribute to Nix packages? Usually someone shows up to the community, or they get exposed to Nix, and obviously they love it. And then they go, what can I do? Or how can I start getting my things in, well, um, into this ecosystem? And we thought we'd kind of answer some of those just how do you get started questions. Um, but yeah, I'm Tom, Tom Barek. I work at Flox. I'm Jacek. I'm the CEO of Nix Academy. Okay. Um, so I'll just kind of jump right into it. Um, first off, um, what are the things, uh, how to get started? Uh, it's kind of, you know, just read the manual is, you know, maybe not the nicest thing to say, but in the end, uh, that's a big piece of it. So, um, yeah, how, how, do, how do I, what manual should I read? Yeah, so there's like the contributing.md file, like linked here. It's, yeah, as you said, a boring document, but it's very easy to understand, like, concrete steps, what to do, what not to do. Uh, when I open a pull request, how does the title of the commits look like, of the pull request, stuff like that. Uh, and yeah, just, just read it. It will be very, very helpful to you. And that's the starting point. What about, uh, what's in, what kind of other uh, resources can I use? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, in the Nix Packages manual, I mean, mind, there are three manuals, Nix, Nix OS, and Nix Packages, right? In the Nix Packages manual, there's this uh, contributing part, and that together with the contributing MD will give you like, I think it will like answer 90% of your questions already, uh, and be also very instructive, like concrete with steps to this and that, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we also have our videos, blog posts, office hours, forums, chat, um, where I would go to the discourse of, uh, Nix, of the NixOS community, and there you can see, like, especially the office hours are announced there. And uh, I think this is very, um, a very good list of everyone will find something that uh, appeals to them to, to get into this topic. All right, Tom. Uh, so where should I start well, if I read all this stuff now and still have questions or feel insecure about how to do this? Well, uh, start small. Right, that's the easiest way to get started. Uh, start with something that you like doing. Um, either that's uh, you have some problem or some like itch you're trying to scratch. Probably not start with the biggest thing or the most complicated thing, you know, large services, large complicated involved things. Either something small. So either something that you have a particular interest in, some sort of passion, something you're trying to learn about. And uh, you know, fix a small bug. Bump a small version, something along those lines. Um, that way you can kind of use that as a way to understand how the ecosystem works and what it is that you're doing. Um, this is probably, you know, one, one aspect here though I do sometimes caution is like your first thing might not be uh, creating a brand new package because usually if it's open source already and it's easy to package and popular, usually that means someone's already packaged it. <laughs> and so you're gonna might end up finding a situation where if it's, you know, one of those three isn't true, you're gonna be kind of a lot harder, especially when you're first starting out. Um, if you're interested in the NixOS model, hey, look, look, go look at the services. There's always documentation. Another thing you can do is um, you can help review PRs, right? So as a committer, it's like really helpful if I go, hey, someone who's passionate about some piece of software has already looked at it, and they're like, yep, it, it works the way it's supposed to, and we like it, and that really helps. So review PRs, and also that gives you an idea of how other people are updating things and how the community works, and it just gets you involved. So um, go review things. Um, but then, you know, where is, where is all this stuff? What, where is all this stuff I'm, I need to look at or what do I review? How do I, you know, where is the next step of getting started? Yeah, so um, if you want to find certain packages, the, the best first spot to look at is in the Nix Packages repository, like the, the big GitHub repository, right? Inside that, there's this uh, packages and by name subfolders, and most new packages go there anyway. There's this other path, uh, like the neighbor of this path is, contains all the other packages, but look into the package by name first. 
and package nix and default nix. These are the files inside that folder. Just look at them and you will get a feeling like how is it all added, how would I add a new package there, or when, when I want to patch a package, where is it actually? You will find it there by just control Fing through the file, right? And then study whatever you are going to take care of here and then see, get your first pointers on how to change it. Of course, the package definitions also contain names of the maintainers. So if you have like questions, how would I do this with this package? I want to do something, but I don't know how to approach it. Of course, you could find the maintainers and ask them, and I'm pretty sure they will be uh, happy that someone tries to help. So, um, wait, oh. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, how do I? So, okay, I, I start contributing. Um, one problem that's come up often is, uh, well, what if we all of a sudden ping everyone? How do how do we stop that? Right. So one thing is like as Sylvan already um, explained yesterday, that is kind of being fixed, right? So that is a relict of older times. Um, of course, you. So so what really happened was you do something wrong, and then 100 people get a notification on GitHub. Some of them are really annoyed, and you don't want to be that person. Maybe that's kind of embarrassing to to trigger that. So don't fear; it's kind of less likely to happen now. So it's less dangerous now to open a pull request thanks to Sylvan, um, but still you would like to uh, like ping only as few and as relevant people as possible. So you should generally rebase your uh, pull requests. So when you have a commit that fixes something and then open a pull request to master, ideally rebase to master first so that we have a very nice um, and short um, change history, so to say. Um, and this way, anyone who is like pinged automatically will be just in the set of the relevant people here. Okay. So, um, Tom, how do I bump a package? I just want to update anything, not fixing anything else. How do I do this? Excellent way to get started. Uh, let's kind of break it down. There's a, only a few things you usually need to take a look at. So you go to one of those like package.nixes or default.nixes, depending on where it is. And there's usually a few things you got to do. You know, you want to update the version of something, update the source reference, update a hash. Um, it's pretty easy. There's different ways you can go about doing this um, in terms of like updating the hash. There's like tools that can help you with that. Um, you can kind of like prefetch things. You could just do the whole tofu and you know see what see what shows up. Um, but like basically the idea is like as you do an update, you're just trying to make sure that hey, does this thing still work? Um, so some things to take a look at is, hey, you have a commit message to say, hey, here's how I bump the thing. All this is documented in the guidelines, but we just want to give you a little analogy of, or just a visual that like, there's not that much to do. All right, cool, I bumped a version, minor version, and then a hash changes. It's pretty nice. Um, if I have to keep doing this, though, that's a little bit annoying, so just be aware of there's also ways to make this automated, right? And then that way you have tooling that kind of does, will start to do this for you. Um, so this is going to go into a place called package uh, pass through update script. This is where like the uh, Ryan TM uh, automation is going to help out. And there's some links up here to kind of where to get started, how to take a look at that. Um, but it's actually not that bad to do it manually. Um, again, if you want to start doing this every day over and over again, and we end up with you know thousands and thousands of PRs, you want to start to use that automation. All right. So cool. I did a small change because I care about it a lot. It's up there. Um, but now I'm just waiting. What now? <laughs> yeah. So it can happen that you open your full first pull request somewhere, not necessarily on Nix packages, maybe any other open source project, and people just ignore it. And then one week later, you're like, hey, uh, can we merge this? And then no one answers. Uh, it's easy to feel like, oh, they don't like me, they don't want to do anything with me, or I did something horribly wrong, and people even feel embarrassed to explain why or something. Um, be assured, most of the time it has nothing to do with you. People are busy, as busy as you are, right? And most of the time, if you have like a thousand tasks in front of you, you will try to ignore as many as possible and only um, do the most burning ones. And open pull requests from strangers are never a high priority, right? So this is, um, please understand this, but also try to be like um, polite and at the same time persistent. Like you, you, you try to help people help you, right? So please explain, like, look, I need to get this in because of this and that. If there's anything wrong, I'm totally, please just tell me what to do and I will fix it. And the thing is that when you stay 
polite and at the same time persistent um, and you express like your your offer to help for helping you then the people who ignore you feel embarrassed about ignoring you <laughs> and uh, this is kind of a soft but also polite way to uh, yeah drive people into helping you because you are helping them essentially right so this is a different way to communicate try to be polite to people who ignore you which might not feel like completely natural but this typically works with a little bit of patience too uh, also you don't have to uh, only like write one polite message every week until someone finally feels embarrassed enough to pick it up of course that's not how it should work all the time you can also go into the forums um, into the chats and whatever Together with a list of the maintainers of a package, you could just communicate with them directly. And typically people uh, answer yeah, faster if you talk to them directly. I think that's similar to like WhatsApp groups when you ask in a friend circle like, hey, who wants to do something? No one answers. But if you talk to them directly, everyone answers immediately. You get the same effects in the open source community. But also when you are communicating with people, like if you ask a for question in a forum, how to get this through or how to do this, um, you should aim towards not looking like uh, can you help me do my homework because this is something that people find annoying and of course there are many very helpful people out there who love to help you but you need to reflect that you already tried hard right and then ideally explain what you tried already how it looked like when it didn't work and that you basically ran out of ideas or something because that is something that people like to pick up and help so it's it's all about how you ask for help and your question should already reflect some effort because people like to help other people who already invested some effort. So that's, in my experience, that generally works great. And yeah, the maintainers are nice people, just mind that they are busy. <laughs> so um, I want to do reviews, as you said, right? Reviewing is already helpful. Um, do I have tools to help me? Because it's just walls of text and uh, is there anything that could be done like automatically? Absolutely. <laughs> um, automation is helpful. Sometimes doing a whole bunch of repetitive work is toil. Let's remove some of that. So there's some uh, really good tooling for this. The, the one I like to use is Nick's Packages Review. It's great. Um, workflow is pretty easy. I just say, hey, Nick's Packages Review PR. I throw a number in there and things start happening. Um, starts things start building. It figures out what actually the change is, and it gives me gets me started, which is great. Um, common things I tend to do with this is uh, I say, hey, okay, I'm going to review the thing. I kind of poke around. If it looks pretty good, everything's been looked at, then I can you know post the result. Other people can share from seeing the fact that okay, I, I took a look, I built it, and I kind of did a, the once over that this thing is pretty good. Command line also lets me do things like you know approve or like show the comments and things that are in there. Um, I can merge from there, so that's really helpful. Um, you got to put in your GitHub token, but there's ways to do that, so that that, that can be done. Um, highly recommend it. Use it. It's great. Um, some other things. Uh, if you're going to be doing a lot of work with um, packages and updating packages, like learn all the Nix commands. Learn how to like. Go evaluate certain things. Go learn how to modify things. Those are um, good ways to kind of check out packages. Um, modules are sometimes a little bit harder because, like, well, I mean, you don't want to be constantly applying it to your own system and everything. So um, a good thing is to like try to build these things and, and test them. Um, hopefully, they come with VM tests, but you could also uh, build VM tests. Um, and then um, other thing I'd like to use is a Nixos container. That's a good way to kind of stand up a system with some sort of a service that you don't want to like be running anywhere else and Take a look. Like, does this thing actually function as expected? Does it do the right things? Um, but yeah, Nix package review. It's a it's a good way to get started. Um, but like, what about what about pitfalls? What are some pitfalls we might have? Um, right. Yeah. What might I see? So it could happen. And don't worry. This is not necessarily something that you would have to know uh, in advance. If you open the pull request and it triggers like one million rebuilds. Um, so okay, that's bad because. Um, even if people like your pull request, it's hard to see if all the packages that depend on your package, which is the reason why there are so many rebuilds, will they still work? So although we have like many tests in the next packages repository, like integration tests with VMs and without and stuff like that, 
Um, it's not like they are all always automatically executed because of the uh, hardware resources that would um, consume. Uh, but the CI will see, okay, so there are like more than 500 or more than 5,000 rebuilds. It will look like on the screenshot here, and your pull request will be tagged by this. And that communicates that, okay, let's review the package normally, but we cannot merge as is because it will trigger so many rebuilds. Um, what you can do then is, can still like, it's relatively easy, simply um, move the pull request to not uh, target the master, uh, the main branch, but the staging branch. That should be done with a little bit of discussion uh, in advance. So you go to the uh, matrix room staging in the NixOS uh, space and ask people how to approach this. So I want to, uh, for example, upgrade CMake and all the packages depend on CMake, like nearly all of them, how to approach this. And then people who have more experience in that will help you. That's again, like, it depends how you ask, right? But then people will be really helpful. And generally the approach is that your pull request would then, when it's accepted, merge to the staging branch, which leads to the yeah, rebuilds being actually done. And then when there are problems occurring there, then it's nice to have not merged it to main, right? Because then all the main users will still experience a working branch. And when then st that stuff works, it will at some point find its way into the main and the other branches. And uh, it just means that we need more patience getting this stuff in. Uh, but it's a very good approach. It also helps you uh, not to look like the one who broke stuff, right? <laughs> so, um, What's this other stuff that I see in GitHub, Tom? I open a pull request and all the things pop up. Is this good or bad? Uh, well, if they're green, they're good. And if they're red, they're bad. That's okay. usually a, a good <laughs> common uh, universal thing. Uh, yeah, this is checking for things. It's checking for, is like the formatting right? The, it's going to check for whether things are evaluating. There's going to check, make sure all the conventions and idioms we're expecting to happen in Nix packages uh, are there. So um, some ideas here, some things to, to use. Use Nix FMT. It's uh, being worked on. It's being improved. And it's gonna, it might even yell at you if you start changing the format of a file that's already been formatted. Um, you know, there's some links up here about like of Borg and like learning about how this like evaluator works, what it does, what the purpose is. How do I control it a little bit to even kind of tell me, hey, I made some fixes. Go reevaluate or like go build this thing. So that's a great piece of automation that we have. And uh, also recently we're having the uh, auto merge bot. This is the way that you can, you know, even without having commit rights, if you're a maintainer for a package, you could still say, hey, I want to merge this thing because I've reviewed it as the maintainer. And then this thing kind of does the actual merging process for you. So like use this stuff. This is kind of the other things you'll see out there in, uh, the, well, in the world. Um, okay, so this is happening. Um, but like, what can I do? Like, how do I test this thing? Right. So, what do I do? Exactly. So if uh, a test of a function is like a predicate function that says after we did some changes, does it still work in the ways that it ought to work, right? Uh, maybe there are a thousand use cases that somehow need to be protected because you don't want to be the, the one who broke someone's use case after updating the package. Uh, so, but I don't even know the people who use this. How could I anticipate what use cases I might be breaking, right? That's kind of the idea behind testing in general, right? So we just pile up all the tests that kind of protect all the uh, past use cases that should still work. And how do we mix this with Nix packages? So the first solution is, of course, the check phase of a package build, right? We have the unpack phase, the patch phase, the configure phase, the build phase, the check phase, and then the install phase. The check phase is one of the few phases in make derivation that is not enabled by default. I guess that is because so many projects don't have good tests, but hopefully yours does. And uh, in the check phase, you would simply run the unit tests and whatever tests it has, all the per package tests, so to say. And if those tests fail, that means that your package doesn't build at all. So it cannot be merged if your package is basically red, right? So this is the best and yeah, most uh, dominant way to, to, to test one package. Then there are other tests. Uh, post install too. So if you are testing the installed package, that's kind of just a different way to test this. Um, in the next packages documentation, you will find more information about these two. Then uh, how does your package like work with other packages? You want to test not only your package, but with others together, for example. Um, how do I, where do I put such tests? Maybe they already exist, but I want to 
uh, connect them to my package. So that if someone else changes this package, that my tests are executed too, so everyone can have their tests covered, right? There's this uh, attribute pass through dot tests inside your uh, package uh, definition. And that is one attribute set where you can simply pile up all the tests that you want to have. And you can have like version tests. That's the, when I execute the package with death dash version, does it actually execute or does it crash on that step already? Um, that could always happen. If the unit test during the package build went green, but something is wrong with the binary in the end, then this is a simple test. Kind of, and in packages.testers, there's a lot of these. You can also add uh, NixOS integration tests there or other derivations. You don't need to. Sometimes you ha can have a packages.run command test that simply does a few things with maybe example inputs. And then if that looks like you expect it, then this is a good test already, right? Sometimes you want to test uh, NixOS modules, how you, like you uh, mentioned earlier. You would need to build a full NixOS system and test if the module behaves correctly. And if your package is part of such a module, uh, you essentially need that, right? So yesterday we had the workshop about NixOS integration tests. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't recorded or something. Hopefully, we'll have some recording of this in the future again. Uh, but the NixOS integration test driver is a very powerful tool to simply spin up multiple VMs with certain configuration, let them play with each other, and then uh, yeah, shut down the test if everything went well. Such a test can take below a minute, depending on the software you test. And if you have tests like this, push them into the pass through dot test sub attribute set, then it does not only document to others like what tests maybe to run before they do the pull request, but also to the automatic CI, which will ensure that this is all running in green. Um, Testing is still a complicated topic, but I hope that this is a good starting point for you to look at what are the existing tests of a package and which tests, where do I add tests to my packages. Okay, Tom, so um, I heard being a maintainer is cool. Uh, why? What is the point of being that? Uh, one, it's fun. <laughs> Uh, and uh, you could kind of take a little ownership of the things that like you're actually passionate and care about. So yeah, um, we talked about the merge bot. We talked about how to make this better. You get notifications, things like that. So uh, it's a good idea. So use these things. Uh, thanks to uh, Lasso and Mick, right? You can now also be a part of the uh, merging process um, without having even like normal commit uh, rights. So um, it's fun and it's great. All right. So let's say I did merge this thing. Uh, what now? What do I do? Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, the thing is, if you uh, merge to main or master branch, then your package is like generally available on the latest and greatest uh, commit of next packages, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's on one of the other branches, which are already cached by the NixOS cache. And um, so your changes need to be like um, merged into the other branches too. And there are tools which we link to here. Uh, PR trackers. A PR tracker works like this. You throw in your PR number and it tells you in which branch uh, your change is already available, from which you know if it's already cached or not. Very easy to use. Yeah. So what if I make a mistake, Tom? Don't worry about it. Everything's fixable. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's not going to be that bad. Uh, everything can be, can be figured out. Um, we want to encourage people to try. That's the, the main idea. All right. Uh, what about, uh, once I've done this a whole bunch of times, now I want to start being more involved. What do I do? How do I get, how do I, what's, what's next? Right, so maybe I became a maintainer of a few packages and so on. It would be annoying to like uh, always ask other people to please merge stuff. Maybe some other people do pull requests that I review and I find them great and I'm the maintainer of this package anyway, so it would be helpful to be able to merge too, right? Uh, and that would release the pressure on all the mergers because there are more of them, right? Uh, how do I get this commit bit? So there's this uh, committers list for which you can nominate yourself, but you can also be nominated by others if you don't like to nominate yourself. Typically, they ask for a little bit of reasoning. Why should this person have the commit bit? Ideally, you already have a track record of effort uh, that you demonstrated that helped the community. So people will feel like, OK, this, if this person has the commit bit, then this will help the community. Great, let's do this. So. Uh, don't do this as the first thing. Do a little bit of contribution for some time and then ask for the commit bit in this nomination process. And then you will get it and will be able to merge stuff. <laughs> um, Tom, how can I update packages over time? 
There's automation for this. It's documented, but we're going we're gonna to go keep moving mm -hmm. here. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much the idea. Go look at the documentation and uh, run through that. And then uh, how much time do we have? More or less uh, zero. More or less well, zero. I mean. <laughs> All right. Well, we were going to do some sort of a live uh, review. But uh, how about this? Uh, if people have any uh, reviews and things while we're here at NixCon, uh, come talk to one of us, and we'll either like help you through it or guide you through it or see if we could get unblocked and uh, try to cut down on that count of open PRs. How about that? OK, I'm really sorry. I, I don't think we really have time for questions. I hope that's okay, yep, but of course. of course, I bet these folks are okay with questions <laughs> during the convention, right? Absolutely, of course. Great. Let's thank the speaker. Well, didn't we just thank you? I don't know. <laughs> thank you.